Hey guys, this is Charlotte, and you're watching Going In Raw. Hey, Brendo, Steve here. Hey, Lars. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Steve and Larson. Available wherever podcasts can be found, and of course, taped live at Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Steve and Larson. Join us tomorrow night for our Impact. It's the last Impact Wrestling on Tuesday, Larson. After that, yeah. it moves to, to Thursday. To Thursday. The week after is Thursday, opposite TakeOver Night 2, so we'll miss that one. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot. The next yeah. couple of weeks are going to be a crazy couple of weeks for wrestling. You got that right, man. Uh, so also just what gonna, better way to get ready for it than ooh, tonight's episode of Raw. Ooh, ooh. This was not a good selling point for any of it. This made me want to run away and do what job? What what should I what should I do instead? I mean, my 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 fallback is barista inside a, a, a Starbucks inside a Target. That's cool. I want to be a caricature artist, but not a very good one. So just a normal caricature artist because none of them mm-hmm. are really good. I want to go set up at Sunrise Mall, which is like the deadest mall possible, maybe in America. Yeah. It's well, remarkable. No, I've, been, actually, I've actually been to a, a mall with more empty stores and less activity. Have you been to Sunrise lately? Not uh, since pandemic. Oh, no. I've been to pandemic. a mall that actually <laughs> uh, had like pandemic levels of inactivity <laughs> years before the pandemic. Pre-pandemic? Oh, no. Which mall was it? Yes. Huh? In South Dakota. It was in South Dakota. Okay. In South Dakota. So uh, there's another thing I have to mention just because uh, I just noticed it again happen. We are using a different system right now because Larson's yeah. Zoom does not want to cooperate with him. We're on Discord. I don't deal uh, with that. And so uh, at various times in the podcast, like right now, he will be out of sync. His his You'll hear his voice and then his lips will move or vice versa. Um, I should be normal because it's all recorded locally over here. So uh, I don't know if there's any, I, probably not anything I'll be able to fix because it sort of comes off and on. So uh, in the audio realm, his voice will sound a little bit more compressed than usual, but that it is what it is. Hopefully, it's a one-time deal. Apropos for the raw they gave us, Larson, because it was, in a word, uh, trash. According to me, anyways. Was, how did you feel about Raw tonight? Uh, I had an unusual experience watching Raw because I missed most of the first hour. <laughs> um, I watched up to about halfway through the the opening bit with with Hurt Business, and I had to go help my my parents with some stuff, and I came back. At the beginning of the, the that awful, awful bit with uh, Shane and Elias and Jackson Riker, where Shane showed off Braun's report card. Um, but then, like, after that, I was like, wow, this is really bad. And that match afterwards uh, wasn't that hot either. And, but then there was a stretch, I was like, oh, this is all right. This is all right. And then it just kind of went downhill from there. Yeah, I don't know. I the only part that I thought this was all right is when Riddle botched live on TV, maybe thinking they were taping. Or if he knew they were live and he was just like, hey, there is no way I can salvage this because, you know, I, I literally am not I'm not going to make it any better by trying to remember what I said. So I'm just going to scoot oh, on out right of here. Thing. He totally he did, right did. Yeah, he totally did. So I thought that was so great. I jumped in. So I jumped in, as I mentioned, during the Shane thing. And after that was the, the Riker versus Strowman match. After that was the dirt sheet with the Ms. Morrison music video. Mm mm. It was so bad. I don't know why I was thought that like after that it was like oh I, mean, I thought the new day stuff with AJ and Amos was good. I thought that was fun. I dude I couldn't. You know what it was? I think because so much had already been so bad. By the time we got that, so I really really like AJ Amos and the New Day, all with their little interactions. I think they're actually mm-hmm. they have very good chemistry, and AJ especially being the guy New Day playing his foil. He works really well with that. Yeah. But tonight was just another segment that it, we got to, it did showcase more of a Moss, which I really liked. Mm-hmm. And I thought him sort of in the end saying, just, you know, putting his foot down and saying, we don't, he wasn't playing along. And he said, we don't need to play these games to win the tag titles. We need to win the match at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. And at that, and when we get there, you're going to see, what I'm all about. And I really like that, but it took forever to get there with all the silly game stuff. And at that point, by that time, I was just, I was completely, I was done. Um, yeah. yeah I, I like I, the stuff yeah. with, with Drew and he goes to the locker room and it's like, Hey, somebody please 
take your shot. Yeah. But that was good. Yeah. And I thought him having those two matches back to back were pretty solid. But then the end of Raw just kind of, I don't know, it was kind of a fart. Um, well, King yeah. Corbin then, seems is King. So do we know is King Corbin joining the Hurt Business? Well, let's talk about that. Why would he join the Hurt Business in the first place? Because it seems like uh, uh, Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander got kicked out. So, uh, oh yeah, open the show probably. The well, kind thing. of. Yeah, yeah. That'll probably be the thumbnail. Um, I would suppose. Yeah. Uh, MVP and Lashley bring Cedric and Shelton out to give him the business about uh, losing the handicap match against Drew last week. Therefore, they're banned from ringside at Mania. Therefore, they can't help Lashley retain the title. And also, uh, they dropped the Raw tag titles. Uh, they were labeled embarrassments. Um, and then Lashley says, we have to go outside the family to get some help. Uh, this is about where I had to step away. So, St- Steve, yeah, you got to fill the blanks for me a little bit there. Uh, but by that time, it's weird. So I missed like effectively like 25 minutes of Raw. And as recap heavy as it was, and as how many t- damn times they promoted various WrestleMania matches mm-hmm. with the same graphics with the ship and the explosion and the cannonball and all that. I, I feel like a good quarter of the show was just WrestleMania graphics promoting matches. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, that not once after that first. 35 minutes of Raw that they ever go back and recap the opening bit with the Hurt Business when it kind of seemed like an important story. <laughs> it's like the most important story beat of the show. Yeah. No, that's actually... Probably recapped re- it right after the commercial break right after it happened. I don't even know You're if Nowhere else did later that. on the show. Yeah. So, like, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> I forget where you said you left off. So, basically... I left off when, Shel- when uh, Lashley... Last thing I saw was Lashley punching Shelton Benjamin. Okay, so Shelton goes off on them, says, you brought us out to embarrass us. You wouldn't have won the title if it wasn't for us. We had your back. MVP says, hey, back up. Shelton says, don't talk to me like a child. Shelton sort of chucks MVP. Bobby then takes down Cedric. Uh, Shelton German suplexes Bobby, and it just sort of breaks down. Bobby takes out Shelton. Cedric backs off. Bobby says, the hurt business is over. You two are out. And who's going to step up to take out Drew? So he didn't really miss a whole lot. Uh, after that, Riddle is backstage uh, talking about Seamus uh, ruining his scooter. Oh, it was an interview. Talking about his uh, uh, Seamus sort of uh, you know using his scooter against it, likening it to dropping a burrito that you're really hungry for. Then he sees Titus, and he says, hey, congratulations. I have some ideas about you roasting your pig at Mania. Titus says, roasting my pig. And he's like, yeah, you're going to do the roast at Mania. And he's like, no, I'm the co-host of Mania. And uh, <laughs> and then he says, he takes off Riddle's hat. And he says, are you okay? And he says, well, I just got checked out. They said I was okay. Riddle's pretty funny sometimes. It's just too much sometimes. This so anyways, is- Titus walks away. Riddle starts to catch up to him on his scooter. Titus is out of screen. And then he gets uh, attacked uh, from the side by Sheamus. He says, uh, you know, looking forward to my match next, fella. Backstage, Cedric and Shelton. Oh, you missed this. This is really good. Shelton and Cedric come up to find Adam Pierce, And uh, basically, they want – Shelton wants a match with Bobby. Cedric says, if anything is left of him next uh, uh, by next week, I want him then. Pierce has sort of given them the whole like, okay, well, I'm not, you're not going to demand anything to me, but I'll take it into consideration as he starts to waffle. Cedric goes off and he's like, you know, where's your sack? What? You have too many problems. What? You you, got to run everything by Bobby the way you do with Roman. Uh, Do you have the authority to make the match or not? Sheldon says, grow a pair. And they just sort of storm off. But Cedric was really commanding here. Like he's, he's a really good bad guy. And Mm -hmm. I'd like, I'd love to see him, and Shelton maybe, you know, start their own deal. I think that'd be pretty great. Uh, another really fun match we got from Sheamus and Riddle. Uh, MVP joined commentary replacing Samoa Joe. I honestly did not hear if they said what the deal with Joe was tonight. Uh, he's out for some reason. Maybe somebody in chat uh, caught it. Uh, but he's on commentary. I thought he was pretty good all night. Straddling that line between, you know, commentator and being part of the story. Uh, he says, uh, he's on commentary. He says, you know, I'm, I'm not mad at her, but at Shelton and Cedric, I'm just disappointed if they had shown the initiative against drew, they wouldn't be where they are, where they are right now. Again, another really great physical match between these two guys. we got a top rope Spanish fly. Uh, Seamus dropped riddle with a white noise on the apron. Got two with that. The finish saw Seamus load up a brogue kick. 
Riddle counters with a knee, and then Sheamus is able to uh, uh, sort of turn that into his own knee strike uh, for three. And uh, Riddle, after the match, attacked him. I actually really appreciate that. You know, I'm not huge on the Riddle comedy stuff. Some of it can make Mm -hmm. me chuckle. It's kind of actually growing on me a little bit. Um, But I really love that they have not... Unless he's like... Well, even when he's teaming with Lucha House Party, like... When he's in the ring, he just brings it. Like, there's none of that in the ring. Like, as soon as he gets in, he, he, he throws his sandals off, he flip-flops off. And then when the ring hits, this dude can throw. And it's it's really great. And these two have terrific chemistry. Their match at WrestleMania should be something pretty great if they give him plenty of time. Yes. Yes. Uh, agreed. After that, backstage, uh, Drew runs into AJ and Amos. Drew is paranoid now. And so he sees AJ you know, one of the uh, more opportunist guys. And uh, he says, you know, I wouldn't put it past you to try to take me out. And Amos says, uh, or AJ says, you know, we have bigger plans than than to do that. Uh, and Amos says, yeah, we've got more realistic plans than you have against Bob Lashley uh, to get the tag team titles. And AJ says, we're going to embarrass the New Day at WrestleMania. Uh, then we've got Elias and Shane McMahon and Jackson Riker. Ugh. And they do, like, you know, I've, I've like half joked about how this is like my favorite feud going into mania. And clearly like, this is not going to be, I don't know. It might not be, it might not be a terrible match. The steel cage match at this point. Um, but the feud is, is completely ridiculous. That's part of the reason why I like it. But I also realize that it's really bad, which is yeah. again, one of the reasons I like it. So Shane has a presentation uh, yeah. of basically Braun as a kid. He has his report card. The fifth grade, yeah. This is where I this is where I I, I got back in here. So uh, Shane's going through the report card. It's all D's, D pluses, D minus, D's all around though. He says, "Well, maybe the letter grades aren't what we should be concerned with." He goes on to read the comments from uh, the various teachers. Math teacher suggests he gets held back a year or two. English teacher says Braun needs summer school, anyways. In summation, Shane says a picture is worth a thousand words. He throws a really bad Photoshop of Braun with a dunce cap on like two plus two equals five on the chalkboard. It's awful. And then Elias says, well, I feel really bad for Braun. And Riker says, well, Braun's just a case of a huge guy that has a little brain. Shane goes on to say he'll outsmart Braun at Mania and beat him just like Riker will tonight. And suggests maybe Braun just needs a hug. Yeah, uh, it's it's all really bad. And after that, we got a bad match. Braun Strowman versus Jackson Riker. As you mentioned, there was like a double axe handle botch. Uh, with Jackson Riker coming off like the second rope, uh, it, it was it was all pretty ugly. We had distractions galore from Shane and Elias. Uh, yeah. Braun does his uh, his train with the sound again to take Jackson Riker out. I'll be honest with you, I don't mind the train noise. It's weird. It's silly. I kind of it kind of it, it, it look. <clears throat> Braun ain't never going to give you much more than a five-star match. If he can bring any entertainment to the table, I'm all in. And I kind of find the stupid train sound entertaining because it's so dumb. I'm you okay with a time it. When he, was, when he was capable of entertaining just by the, 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 the amount of destruction that he could unleash, even in the course of a fairly standard match, he used to be entertaining in that regard. He didn't need gimmicks like audio effects dropped in uh, out of nowhere uh, to, to hype up a move that used to be kind of fun, especially when Kevin Owens would take it and do a full flip when he got the shoulder tackle. I take what I can get. It's a they, situation where they take something that's that's well within the conventions of professional wrestling, ongoing ringside hitting shoulder tack, shoulder tackles, and then introducing something to the equation that takes you out of what is going on ringside. I hear yeah. that train sound like they're piping in a train sound. This makes no sense why they would be doing this. No, oh, yeah, it takes I mean, me out they, of it they they openly state their uh, their entertainment. You know, when somebody says "hit my music," music happens. Braun yeah, makes the, Braun, Braun makes the signal. He has somebody back there. Okay, well, train sound. I, I then I, I I require segment. Braun hands somebody the 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 thumb drive or something and says, "Play this when I do my Strowman Express thing." I would love to see that segment. It's not a requirement for me. However, I do think is. that would enhance the the experience. For me, it is because I otherwise, it's I just a normal know it's leap in logic, isn't it? Hey, okay, this no, means this. 
Oh, it's crap. Because he was doing this for months in advance, and there was no sound effect. Well, I know, but then you could just surmise that he went backstage. You're getting the benefit of the doubt way too much. It's garbage. Um, so anyways, uh, Strowman wins. Uh, Elias. Let me get this. Oh, he, he wins. He rolls out of the, uh, the ring, chases after Shane. Shane gets in the ring. Braun gives chase. Elias hits him with a running knee. Uh, he and Shane are beating down Braun. He does a, the, the Hulk out thing where he stands up pushing them both off. Uh, so Shane and Elias, they're sent out of the ring. Braun asks for a mic. Asks Shane where he's running off to. He says, oh, you think I forgot uh, that you accepted my challenge? You, you were going to let me pick whatever match I wanted at Mania? Well, I've made up my mind. One where you or your goons can't get involved. There's nowhere for you to run or hide at WrestleMania. You're going to get these hands to steal cage match. You really should have picked Hell in a Cell because there's a roof on the cage. People just can't climb in. I actually like chain shut. I thought Braun was pretty decent this last bit on the mic. I mean, I'll, I'll give credit where credit's due. I thought, you know, him being out of breath. Hey, he was fine. Probably helped the performance a little bit. Uh, yeah, Shane's going to have a crazy spot and that's going to cost him the match, right? Is that going to be the deal here? Maybe, or maybe it'd be a situation. Remember that time where uh, uh, Braun threw Kevin Owens off the top of the cage? And did, didn't he technically lose that match? Did lose that match because Kevin Owens escaped the cage, yeah. Yeah, so here's the thing. There are a lot of really smart ways you can win a steel cage match. And that you just mentioned one of them. I just broke my pen. You just mentioned one of them. Get yourself thrown off. There is a door. Your go- like His goons are totally might come into play here. I mean, they could. They totally yeah, could. If they, wanna, if they wanna really impress me with some storytelling, they will do a spot up there where Braun's got Shane in a situation where he can throw him off the top of the cage and Shane's like, Yeah, come on, do it, Braun. Do it. Braun thinks better of it. Learning from his past mistakes. Unless it's a, unless it's all a big rib on Braun, which I'm not convinced it's not. Which would be kind of great if he was like, Oh, not again. <laughs> Anyways, uh, after that, uh, oh. we got the I, dude. I'm not. I'm not. This is gonna take all of a minute for me to recap. Because, excuse my language. Fuck this. I'm so. This is the thing that bugs me the most about this Ms. TV stuff. Now, I've said before plenty of times, I can like the Miz. There have been times when I've appreciated the Miz. His feud when he was with Maurice versus John Cena and Nikki Bella. I thought was really entertaining. I thought Miz was good. He was a heel good, made good points. I can't stand him right now. And the big and the biggest crime of it all is he's got John Morrison next to him. He's funny. He's charismatic. Did you see what he was wearing today? His opener, my hair is so big because it's where I hide my secrets. And then Miz has to like Miz comes back with like something that's just completely not clever at all. And he just talks and talks and talks and talks. That's the biggest crime here is that you have Morrison, who's one of the best in ring workers. He's hilarious, has charisma, all sorts of personality, and he's relegated to the guy who is it's and it always happens with Miz. Like when Sandow was with Miz. That was the whole point of that. Sandow was so over with the fans, and they didn't do anything with it. He's always overshadowed by somebody who has everything that he doesn't have. Mm-hmm. And it's 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 so glaring that it's like, why is this guy in this thing right now? It's so dumb. But uh yeah, so yes. Fun. So, anyways, Miz talks a lot. He's not interesting. They have a music video, and it's a really, really long one. You mentioned before the cameras were rolling. Yeah, they, I went to go get some more pizza and salad. I thought, well, this will be our, our close to the time I got get back. I got back. Not only was it not over, it went on for another two minutes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They literally put the whole song in there. Which I, like, on effort points, I appreciate that they actually did it in But it, add, it added to nothing. It added nothing. Yeah. It added nothing. Yeah. It added nothing. Yeah, so RT- it was the same joke over and over for two minutes. Yeah, RTG has a race. His Miz is the maple leaf muscle in this situation. Um, anyways. anyways, it just keeps going and going and going, and then it finally mm-hmm. ends. And Morrison asks Miz, "Why are you crying?" And, and Miz, like, "I'm just practicing for when I win an award." Anyways, uh, Damian Priest and Bad Bunny walk out. Priest congratulates them. We actually enjoyed your video. Hey, Miz, I'm happy you found the time to relax and goof off because you won't be relaxing when Bunny handles you at Mania. And then uh, Bunny then says. Uh, he's going to make Miz his bitch. Mm-hmm. Uh, Miz and Morrison come out to confront a priest and bad bunny. 
And at first, uh, Bad Bunny's standing behind Damien Priest. And Damien Priest's like, he doesn't need my help. Mm-hmm. Gets out of the way. Miz steps up. Uh, Bad Bunny hits him with the, with the right. Uh, knocks Miz down. Bunny, Bad Bunny and Priest, they get in the ring. Miz tries to go after him. Morrison tells him, Miz, wait till Mania. Mm-hmm. Wait till Mania. Mm-hmm. Uh, after that, we had a uh, Randy Orton promo. Uh, I mean, it was pretty long, but he basically says uh, he's gone up against a lot of people. He names a bunch of names. He says, but none of them compare to The Fiend. I chose to set The Fiend on fire. No man could have survived that, but that's the thing. I ignored the fact that The Fiend is not a man. He's much more. He's an abomination from hell. Orton's delivery on this stuff was really, really good. Um, I'm looking forward to what... I don't know. Maybe they'll write him off for a little while after Mania. He's Orton. He probably is going to take some time off. Um, but, you know, if he continues this level of of uh, uh, performance into meteor feuds that maybe don't linger as much as these as this one has um man i'm really looking forward to, to seeing more of him uh later on this year because uh, i really mm-hmm. like his work it's just a feud yeah. is kind of stale for me at this point it is stale. i mean he just kind of at the end says i gotta go essentially uh I, he knows how far he has to sink into hell to make sure the fiend is out of his life once and for all mm-hmm. yeah yeah that's gonna be I, I hope i hope they get very creative with that match I hope so too, and more so than just projecting crap on the ring. Uh, after that, Bob Lashley versus Shelton Benjamin. Relatively short bout, but it was fun. Uh, Shelton Lashley got a good amount of offense in. Um, and uh, at one point, uh, Cedric distracts Bob Lashley. He gives chase. Uh, he gets back in the ring, walks right into pay dirt. Lashley kicks out at one. Uh, Shelton hits a, cor- a, c- a couple of knees in the corner that were great. Mm hmm. Uh, Lashley sh- kind of shrugs it off, hits some spine busters, puts on the uh, the hurt lock to get the win. Uh, however, they made a point of saying that Shelton did not pass or not tap out; he passed out. He mm-hmm. didn't quit. Yeah, yeah. MVP was you can tell that almost felt like it almost felt like MVP kind of directing the story there because like oh he tapped out and he's like no he didn't he passed out. Like I wrote this, I wrote it for him mm-hmm. to pass out. That's what happened. You know, it kind of had that feel mm-hmm. to it. I loved it. I thought it was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, backstage, the New Day confront AJ and Amos. They've got games to play. It's game night with the New Day. And uh, AJ says, we're going to beat you with those games, or we're going to beat you at WrestleMania for your titles. And so we get mm-hmm. New Day game night. And there's a couple games here involved. First off, they do like, um, you know, this is basically another play on how well do you know your partner. Uh, yeah, totally. And the first one is they do like a pantomime thing with their partner. So uh, Kofi. Well, charades. Uh, charades. Charades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Charades. Uh, so Kofi has to like uh, uh, do a charades of uh, what was it? It was like a, a some sort a of thousand miles by Vanessa Carlson. Carlton. Thank you, thank you. And of course, you know, Xavier Woods gets it. He gets it with like the bare minimum of charades. Uh, uh, AJ gets the Lion King, and Amos doesn't even try. He's not even trying the entire time. <laughs> AJ's licking his arms, and he putting like an invisible crown on and the crown on his head. That's pretty funny. Amos doesn't even try. I mean, AJ's really giving it his all. So next they play win, lose, or draw. Or Pictionary, I guess, whatever. Pictionary, yeah. Um, AJ uh, (laughs) has... uh, I didn't see... Did did the New Day go first on this one? What did they do? Yeah, they did. They they got uh, Woods drew drew a rocket ship. Oh, it was a rocket ship. It's supposed to be Amos's turn to draw. He doesn't want to. He's stone-faced the entire time. Yeah, AJ says, I'll do it. And so he gets the sun. Easiest thing in the world. Yeah, and so that's what he says. This is super easy. So he just draws a sun. Yeah. Moss doesn't bat an eye to Stone utter fist. a word. Yeah. And then he just gets pissed off. And he says, enough of this game. We don't have to win these games to win the tag titles. We just need to win the match at WrestleMania to win. And I'll show you both what I'm capable of. AJ starts tearing down the set. And the New Day start acting like he's doing charades for them. Saying, oh, oh, you're, at, you're, you're a child. You're a three-year-old. You're, you're, you're pitching a fit. You're throwing a tantrum. That was Great. pretty funny. They've got good chemistry. I like uh, the, the bit where, because uh, Amos says, I'll show you what I'm capable of. And AJ says, yeah, I'm going to show Xavier Wood what I'm capable of. And Xavier Wood says, maybe I'll show you what I'm capable of since <laughs> we're all saying we're it. We're all saying it. Yeah, they're they're having a good time out there. there, um, there. After that, <clears throat> we had a match, Xavier Woods versus AJ Styles. Before that, they showed us this little kid doing a surprisingly good Hulk Hogan impression. I, yeah. was, I was actually, I was surprised by this little kid. I forget his name, but I was surprised <laughs> he had all the mannerisms down. Jack. He had yeah. Jack in there. It was funny. Yeah, uh, Xavier Woods versus AJ Styles was good stuff, but it ended in a wonk because Amos got involved. He uh, Xavier Woods was going to try to give a PK 
to AJ uh, over on the apron. Amos sort of punched Xavier over the top rope. Then he pressed. Slammed I mean, that was Kofi. great. He caught he caught the 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 kick and like mm-hmm. flipped them over he the flipped top him over that the top great. rope. Yeah, yeah, that was good stuff. And Kofi then, Kofi goes after him and, uh-huh. and Amos catches him and press slams him over the barricade. That was great. It was pretty rad. Yeah, it was pretty good. I'm really looking forward to. You know, I'm not I'm not expecting a lot. Keep it simple with Amos. Keep it simple with him. Agreed. But like you know, he, so after that. Woods is in the ring and he gets in there and he does like a back elbow in the corner. He ran. Yeah, I got to see him he run. Ran. For he once. showed some good foot speed there. Yeah, he did. And then he hit Xavier Woods with a nasty like choke bomb. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was pretty rad. I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. I wonder what kind of gear he's going to have. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. After that, we had Alexis Playground. She says, Randy burned the fiend alive, but he was just trapped. He wasn't dead. He was a fiend in my, he was the fiend in my, fiend in a box. But you can't trap them forever. All he needed was time. And now he's salivating at the idea of standing across Randy at WrestleMania. Randy's biggest mistake was thinking he understands what's next. He doesn't. But I'll uh, get him and I'll give him and all the Fireflies a tiny hint. At WrestleMania, the legend killer dies. And then they sort of pan out and the fiend is on the swing next to her. It's like sitting there like this. It's, it's one of those things where it doesn't work in full light. You see how cheesy the suit is in full when it's when he's fully lit. They they really should have been basked in like her purple light or something. Like well, that. even in the purple light, I don't think it looks that impressive. It's new. The 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 like the mask looks all right. Not really into the rest of it. So I think it's the body dimensions. So like he looks like he has a big head when he's mm-hmm. got this mask on, <clears throat> and his mm-hmm. body looks more rotund than it usually does. Like usually yes. they they outfit him so that. His huskiness to, you know, uh, as, for a pun there, looks makes him look like he's, you know, a, a barrel chested dude kind of, you know. Yeah. Uh, this he makes him look frumpy. sort of. He's frumpy. He looks frumpy now. Frumpy. With a big head. There's nothing. It's not. There's nothing. In, he's frumpy. There's, not, there's nothing intimidating about it. He's just a, little, a little frumpy. I mean, the stuff he flat. does is intimidating, but he doesn't look intimidating. Yeah. No, he doesn't. <laughs> and quote the Raven says he looks like a burnt baked potato. <laughs> There you uh, go. This next bit I thought was pretty solid. So Drew is sitting on a road case, just stewing, just pissed. So he gets up, he walks to the locker room. He says, "All right, who's gonna who's gonna step up?" Nobody stepped up. I'm actually kind of disappointed. So awkward, this, man. If this was if this was me years ago, I would have uh, been all over it. Pleads for someone to step up and drop him. He mm. goes with the Braun. It's like Braun, why have you stepped up? You should have been a five time world champion right by now, but you're not. Why is that? And Braun says. Uh, after I beat Shane at Mania, if you're champ, I'll be the first to come find him. And then Drew goes over to uh, Humberto Creo and grabs him by the shirt, basically by his collar. Yeah. Pleads with him. Hit yeah. me. Come on. Hit me, Humberto. Hit me. And then throws him across the locker room. Goes over to Riddle. And he's like, why don't you step up? He, well, she says, well, Sheamus, essentially, says Sheamus is, is, is a handful. Uh, I think it was it was uh, uh, Angel Garza. It was so quick. It was hard it to was, tell. Angel was Garza, Garza comes yeah. from behind and like, barely taps him on the back. Drew tosses him aside. And then he goes over to Gulak. And I swear Gulak is about to laugh this whole time. He started smiling. He st- yeah. No, dude, he legitimately... <laughs> he, he was like, oh, you Gulak. And he was like... <laughs> Put the laugh the whole time. It was time. like, uh, what's his name? L- Paul London. Yeah. So anyways, <laughs> he, he gets a headbutt. And then Drew walks over to Ricochet and says, hey, I've known you for a long time. Uh, he kn- He knows he needs an opportunity. And Ricochet more or less says, yeah, I don't believe anything that Lashley oh. had to say, but if it's a fight you're looking for, look no further. And Drew just goes, all right, I'll see you in the ring. I couldn't imagine good. how mortified I'd feel if I was on live TV and the biggest man, the biggest alpha dude was like, you know, about to throttle me. And I'm supposed to be like defiant, but still kind of intimidated. And all I can muster up is a laugh. I'd be mortified. I hope he didn't get in trouble for that. I hope not, but it seems like a, a lot of this backstage stuff, people are like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. It, it really, dude, it, I, it, Raw tonight had the feeling of a show that just wants to get through it. You know, like every, it just felt like, and except for Drew, Drew was in Bobby, and like people were doing their jobs, but it just, even like in this, like this next match here, Naomi versus Shayna Baszler. Yeah. 
it just all felt phoned in. This was the first women's, you know, usually WWE is decent with their women's division. This was the first one. This is like two hours and 15 minutes deep. Yeah. And they're, and they're just getting to this and it's a mess. So it's Naomi versus Shayna Baszler, Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke are on commentary. They want a piece of the tag action. Chaos breaks out with Lana because Lana's there back in Naomi. Nia's there back in Shayna. Reginald's out there too. So it's like just a ton of people. Chaos yeah. breaks out between all these during the match. I do appreciate that when Shayna did the elbow spot to Naomi, Dana was like, oh, I I know that. I figured I know it that out. strategy, she said. Yeah, exactly. Well, Naomi didn't figure it out. Dana was like, ha ha, she didn't figure it out. I like that um, because we've seen that in the ring. Uh, so because of all the chaos going on, Naomi got <clears throat> like the roll up win. How many how many matches the last two months has Shayna lost via roll up? She's like new Baron Corbin. Yeah, she dude. gets distracted. She gets rolled up. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so after that, well, anyways, yeah, that happened. Oscar and Riddle are backstage. This was the moment of the night. Uh, he he confirms that he has Sheamus at WrestleMania. Oscar loves his scooter. He says something like, "Do you think they would like this in Japan?" And she says something, and then he's like, oh, I just forgot what I was saying. <laughs> and then he scoots off with a big Rides smile off. on his face. It was pretty great. It, it was, was pretty, pretty great. great. Yeah. But, like, I was at first, I was like, is this part, was this part of the thing? Because yeah. the very first thing, like, Austin says, how you doing? He goes, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling pretty beat up. Mm-hmm. I get a face Sheamus at Mania. So I, at first I saw that, not thinking immediately it was a botch, but like, oh, he's really selling. Man, he got beat up out there. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have the energy to do his usual thing, so he's just going to ride off. <laughs> no, the enforcer the enforcer texted me. What did he say? He said, do you think that Riddle line was a botch? And I was like, dude, I think either he thought, I, I maybe it's probably doubtful he thought they were taping it because I don't think they tape anything unless it's like a special segment. So he probably knew it was live, and that was probably just his best cover to get out of there. Was I forgot what I was saying, and sort of looked into the camera while he said it because he was self conscious about it. You know, it's like, oh man, I totally forgot what I was saying, and he just wrote off. What are you gonna do? You know, yeah. it's like, yeah, just one of those things. One of those things. Uh, after this, even that this next stu- all this stuff coming up now was just. Like, there was no heat with the contract sign. It was Oscar versus Rhea Ripley. And uh, Rhea says, I was confident enough to challenge you at Mania. I'm confident enough that I know I can take the title from you at Mania. Oscar laughs at her, says, your confidence isn't earned. Uh, Rhea then throws the table at us, says, you're not ready for Oscar. Rhea throws the table at Oscar, or she just, like, lifts it up, and it whacks Oscar on the head. She sells it like a million bucks. Yeah, that was, that was good. Nia and Shayna both come out. Basically say, we're not doing anything at WrestleMania. Nia challenges Rhea and Asuka to a tag match next week. Rhea says, we accept, because Asuka's still laid out. That's it's so, it's so, so lazy. lazy. So damn They lazy. literally <laughs> did the same exact thing on SmackDown. Yep. With those, with, 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 with that match. Sasha and Bianca, yeah. It's so lazy. It's super lazy, man bad it's bad it, writing it's bad it's creative i i don't know and what, you have you have shana out there talking trash like we've dominated this division for nearly a year and she just got rolled up just like got rolled up prior just she's got been rolled, up. rolled up like all the time over the last few weeks mm-hmm. doesn't make any sense it's bad writing it's bad writing. yeah yeah i it's it's i don't care about this i don't want to see them in a match together I don't know what I, I mean, I I don't know. I'm not writing the show, but give me something more creative than this. Interesting. I know. You I could know. do, there's any number of things you could do. Even, dude, even, look, there's what, a go home left? Isn't there like one yeah. show left? Yeah, there's one show left. Yeah. Put together yeah. a mini documentary, like a f- seven minute video package where they talk. Because sometimes those can be compelling. Sometimes yeah. they can be. Done right, yeah. yeah. When done right. You know, not just when a recap. Right. Like an actual, you know, show them training. And I don't know, man. There's, you know, Rhea has all sorts of stuff she can talk about. You know, she was a year ago or a little bit more than a year ago when she beat Shayna Baszler for the NXT title. You know, uh, everybody came out, lifted her high. It was a huge moment. It was awesome. And, you know, here she is now. And it's like she's had a crappy year, basically. 
Um, you know, losing to Charlotte. There's any number of things she can talk about. Oscar, any number of things she can talk I know. about. I know. And she's a compelling I know. character. She's I a know. compelling personality. What the? What Just is do this, this lazy, stuff? lazy crap instead? Yeah. Uh, after that, Ricochet's backstage. MVP rolls up to him and says, "Oh, after all this time, I'm happy to see that you're thinking like a businessman." And Ricochet says, "No, no, no. This isn't about anything Lashley said. This is about me." I'm going to go out there. I'm going to beat Drew because I know I can't. Mm -hmm. And that's what we got next. Drew McIntyre versus Ricochet. Now, I'm assuming we're going to go into the Andrade uh, interview and news brief tomorrow. Correct. Yeah. Uh, But one of the more interesting things was he talked about he's supposed to have a match against Drew. Yeah. I think it was, shoot, someone else mentioned this on Twitter, and I thought the same exact thing. And I I think maybe it was Sean Rossap. I'll check in a second. Uh, Mentioned this, that. So during this match, when Ricochet was getting off a bunch of crazy stuff, it wasn't a long match. Ricochet got an opportunity to showcase what he can do. So during Andrade's interview, he talked about he was supposed to have a match against Drew. The producer told him, essentially, this is a squash match. Drew's going to destroy you. And then Drew went up to him and said, no, do your stuff. Mm -hmm. Get your stuff in. Uh, Make it a competitive match, essentially. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what happened. So uh, hats off to Drew for doing that. First of all, it's amazing. Um, and, and seeing this, you can't help to think that, yes, Drew is, is a prime position within the company and realizing seemingly, cause I guess another thing Andrade said, there were several people that when he came back in February, several people saying they got nothing for you. Yeah. And I believe Drew was one of them. Yeah. Um, that Drew being in such a prominent, uh, position in the company, uh, is nonetheless looking after everybody else and making sure. No one's kind of getting, for lack of a better word, buried. Yeah. You know? Yep. Because basically everybody on the roster is immensely talented. Mm-hmm. And to see talents like Ricochet, like Andrade, like Alistair, not being utilized. Mm-hmm. And while I'm sure Drew can't go into anybody's office and say, sorry, I'm going to lose this match. You can at least say, hey, you know what? You want this to be a squash match? Mm-mm. He's getting his stuff in, you know? Yeah. And we got to see that with Ricochet tonight. Um, and yeah, I think yes, to your point, totally. yeah, it, it, it's entirely, I thought the exact same thing when you see Ricochet doing all sorts of cool stuff, it's like, you know, yeah, Drew started out by, uh, by just, you know, throwing him further than any human being should be thrown. Um, yeah. but then Ricochet got his stuff off, uh, missed a six thirty in the end, drew counter with a claymore. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it was, no, it was definitely, it was, sorry, on meter up. It was Sean Ross staff that mentioned that on Twitter. And I, yeah, I was thinking the same thing as a match was happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A bit where, where Drew goes for the overhead belly to belly and Ricochet lands on his feet. It was awesome. That was amazing. Yeah, Cause the angle on that was so like mm-hmm. parallel to the mat. That was insane. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when, uh, insane. when, uh, when Shingo did that, uh, clothesline and Osprey was able to just like flip out of it. I was like, mm-hmm. I didn't know that's these, these dudes are doing crazy stuff out there these days. It's, it's fantastic yeah. to see. And it's, it's an absolute crime that, uh, that Ricochet, you know, he's, he's, he is where he's at because he needs to be featured. Mm-hmm. More. Um, got that right. You got after that right. the match, so, uh... this was kind of a surprise. Uh, Ali, uh, decided to take up, uh, uh, MVP's offer, Bob Lashley's offer. He attacks Drew McIntyre afterwards. Drew throws him out, challenges to a match on the spot. Come back from commercial. We have that match. Ali targeting the leg of Drew McIntyre. Mm-hmm. Uh, Drew puts him down with a headbutt and a claymore, but I like the interaction between Ali and MVP saying, hey, I'm doing this. Uh, yeah. I'm really happy they used uh, Ali in this spot. I mean, yeah, he took the loss, but uh, I-, I really hope they give him something to work with coming up out of Mania. I Me really too. do. He had new gear, it looked like. It he was did have new gear, of, uh, yeah. Olive green. Mm-hmm, yeah. So... I don't know if that's going to lead to something. Who knows? Who knows? So anyways, uh, after the match, uh, Drew gets the mic, calls out Lashley. He said, everybody tried and everybody got their ass kicked. Uh, now, Lashley, it's time for you to be a man, come out here and finish him himself. So Lashley starts to walk out. We get this really awkward commercial break at at 7.50. Come back, and Lashley's just kind of on the apron. All right, I'll get in the ring now. <laughs> well, um, it was even more awkward was- because when Drew is calling him out before commercial break, he said, don't listen to MVP in your ear. I know he's oh, talking no. to you right now. And then the camera cuts to MVP at ringside. 
And then Drew had to kayfabe that uh, at the commercial break. He's like, oh, I got so wrapped up in the match, I completely didn't notice that MVP was sitting out here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Again, it just, I, dude, I, I don't know if it's a match. It, I have no idea. I have no clue because I'm not there. But this it gives me the feeling that the dude in charge has got way too much going on. And these are the things that fall through the cracks. You know? So, 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 it, it, there was three items, I think, on the the raw preview, which is unusual. Mm-hmm. There's that many, mm-hmm. but also this is some of this stuff. Just really feels like, all right, these these performers are getting this stuff. Yeah, that's at the very last minute. Yeah, and that's and that's you know? that's what I'm getting at is that it does. It feels like it's so stitched together, and you can only you can only maybe assume that because there's one dude who is basically getting these scripts and then doing whatever he's doing to them. And he's the same guy who's like, you know, doing the same thing for SmackDown. Mm-hmm. And he's got WrestleMania around the corner, plus two nights of takeover around the corner, plus an announcement maybe tomorrow for NXT, plus this, that, and the other thing. Plus, he's got plus, he's got this Andrade interview, which dropped an hour before yeah. or in the hour before Raw started airing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I Who knows, man? Who knows? So, anyways, uh, after we com- come back from commercial and Drew kayfabes why he didn't know MVP was sitting ringside, uh, he tells Lashley, uh, he says, you can send anyone after me. It doesn't matter. You can't prevent the inevitable. We're, we're having a match at Mania for the title. Uh, Lashley then says, I never needed anyone help. anyone's help. Uh, I almost ended your career with the beating I gave you at Elimination Chamber, but that mauling uh, will pale in comparison to what I'll do to you at Mania. Your time is up. It's now the almighty era. Uh, Drew says by sending everyone out to get him, uh, he's shows that you're afraid of me. Uh, Lashley lays into him. They're brawling. Uh, Drew hits a headbutt, then boots Lashley to the floor, and then hey, Baron hey. Corbin runs in, uh, lays out Drew from behind, drops him with a pair of belly to backs. Uh, Drew responds to belly to belly, looks for a claymore. Baron counters with a deep six. Then Lashley comes back in the ring. He puts the the hurt lock on Drew, mm-hmm. and the whole time Baron's yelling. Uh, Oh, do you like this? How do you like this? Do it again. Like he's yelling at Lashley to put him back in it and stuff. Um, and then on commentary, MVP says, "Ladies and gentlemen, this is the hurt business." So it's like, oh, so is Baron in the hurt business now? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, Baron. You know, given what we saw on SmackDown when he would be, you know, talking about his expensive watch, his expensive suit. Like mm-hmm. in a way he fits. Um it's something new for him. I, I, I yeah. actually like I think Baron has a lot to offer. I think that he's been on the short end of the creative stick since like day one almost. Oh yeah. Um well, I, th- I think if he's a member of, of Hurt Business as henchman as opposed to the guy with the henchman, that's probably a role that's better for him. Yeah, Ian henchman as opposed to the guy having henchman. I know? agree. I agree a hundred percent. Get rid of this stupid. Uh, did they? So s- some somebody somebody mentioned in chat earlier, and maybe you can maybe they or you or they can like uh, 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 clarify that I got this right. Jeez, Cal. Every time I'm during a show, like he's called me twice today, and every time I'm filming a show, <laughs> I'll text him. He'll say, "Whoops." I know. I love Cal. Did you ever talk to him after he called you earlier? No, I had too much stuff going on. Oh, okay. That's um, probably why. I mean, no, uh, no, I didn't. Um, so no, yeah. Somebody mentioned that they had called. They referred to him as Baron Corbin, not King Corbin, uh, tonight. Oh. And I did not notice one way or the other. If I didn't it notice gets either. if it gets him out of that ridiculous Dark Order outfit, I'll be very happy about that. Yeah. You know, put on some put on some black and gold. Um, some hurt business. I should colors. go back to wearing the uh, the 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 the, the slacks and, that. and dress up shirt, dress shirt to wrestle. Heck yeah, man! The vest. I thought that was great. I couldn't stand that. Um. So yeah, we'll see. I think it'd be a decent change for him because I I, yeah. I can't I can't help it. I can't stand it when he's on SmackDown. I just like uh, I actually kind of like the Sammy stuff to be honest with you. But yeah, was, him and Sammy had good chemistry. They did. So that was fun. But it was so it was such a small thing. Hey, did you notice the the poster that Maggie got me is. Yeah, I see it back there. <laughs> These fools back there. 
<laughs> All right, let's answer a couple of questions before we uh, we have to. Well, end this, this whole enterprise just falls apart. Oh, it seems like goodness. it's on the verge of doing it so. Really Glamorous does. Jar says, "I just looked at the highlights online, and my goodness, did I cringe hard? Really, never going to watch Raw after that lull." Yeah, yeah it wasn't a good show. It's, yeah, it's not. It's not a good show. Somebody had the audacity uh, on my Twitter to say, "Stopped watching you guys because you never find anything. You, you're only positive about AEW." I'm like, "Would you tweet that to Larson and not me, please?" Because that's not my gimmick, okay? It's not my thing. No. Literally today, I'm a show. yeah, I reviewed NXT UK and I said it was my favorite thing, and it, it is at this point. Yes. So, anyways, um, uh, Flats asked, "Has WB become self-aware and found the one surefire way to ensure Lashley is booed at Corbin?" Possible. Add Corbin, uh, dude. It's a, it's a formula that Vince has used before. It was the Add Sheamus yep. formula. Yeah, that, that's a possibility. These days, you add Seamus to something. I'm actually excited about it. I love Seamus. Just want that lobster head theme back. I'm putting it on my phone again. There you go. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Dog Authority figure. Who has the most? Oh, this is a great question. Who has the most must-win match on the Mania card? He says for him, it's Rhea Ripley. I would actually feel that way more so if Charlotte were in that match. Then to bring that story full circle. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. Um, okay, list off who we got here. Drew versus Lashley, not a must win for either guy. Uh, Roman versus... Oh, Braun. Braun. Braun needs to win that match. If Braun loses to Shane, done. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Done. Yes. Yes, yes, done. yes. Done. Done as a main eventer ever again. Uh, can't, can't White Brownie, with the way Raw has been lately, do you ex- ex- expect the Raw after Mania to feel important or will just be another throwaway episode? Last year, I mean, granted, it was early in the pandemic. Uh, it just felt like a normal episode of Raw. So, mm. I don't know. Uh, let's see know. here. Cameron Bortolazzo. Uh Steven Larson are signed to a major record label to create a diss track music video. What is the name of the song and the theme of the video? Like that's what we have to do. That's the, that's the the terms of the deal. We have to do it has a diss to be track. A diss track. Uh, and for some reason, we did sign. <laughs> we agreed to this. Um, a diss. We track. do a diss track about Hilton. <laughs> oh my God! I got. I, we had the funny. So we we recorded. A, asked Stephen Lacey today, and yeah. one of the questions was, "What happened to Hilton?" And I took that to mean. In the in in the macro sense, what really happened to Hilton? He's got a wonderful yeah. family. His parents are amazing people. Yeah. So I took it to mean what along the way happened <laughs> to Hilton. We were laughing so hard. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> Don't you remember? Never mind. I'm not gonna get it. Yeah, no the hum- uh, the human one. What was it? Is, yeah. is 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 Hilton the real person? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was one of the funnier in jokes. That was one of the funnier in jokes. <laughs> oh man uh, Patrick Oliva says maybe it was too much for Vince since they are taping two weeks of Raw and two weeks of Smackdown before Thursday I guess that's right they have to get everything shot because it got to be out of the uh, out of Thunderdome out of the Tropicana field by the end of the week so. uh, what happened to Hilton that's a great question <laughs> what did happen to Hilton oh man and I'm still not entirely sure what, what that question really meant like, do we just not mention him anymore? Well, like, he, he you know hasn't been on. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah, I've seen I've seen him once in the last year. I think. I don't know that I've even seen him one time. At least once. I mean, we text. We once. text plenty. You know. Yeah. We text plenty. He just lives down the street from me. So. <clears throat> Um, yeah, that's right. He does. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, wow. Moses opposes. Which Mania title match do you change? Oh, this is easy. To a six-man ladder match to make it more interesting. It's either of the mid-card titles. Probably there's uh, there's probably more heat with Big E and Apollo than Riddle and Sheamus. I'd probably change Riddle and Sheamus to a six-man ladder match. I would change the Raw Women's title match to a six-woman ladder match because this match has three weeks to build. As you said, the contract selling didn't have a whole lot of heat. 
Hot tea. Um, for a while, it seemed like they were going to do some sort of story. By for a while, I mean an episode of Raw, where a lot of people were stepping up to Asuka hoping to get that Mania title shot. And I said at the time, heck, a gauntlet match yeah. with Asuka. Yeah. Could do a ladder match. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, let's see here. What would... Uh, oh, what a great question. JTV08 says, what would Steven Larson's grades and comments be on their respective report cards? Let's just talk about now. What would they be now? Larson, I know yours is... Uh, you'd have like a, a C- in tech class because he keeps spilling wine... Number well, one, he's number one. Is. He's drinking in class, and number two, he spilt wine on his laptop. Well, that's not necessarily a lack of understanding of technology. <laughs> I mean, it kind that's of careless. is because you're being reckless around it, and the understanding should be: don't be reckless around technology. I'm not being reckless. <laughs> I'm not doing things knowing full well. I'm being I'm being hapless, perchance, but not reckless. Oh. Uh, yeah, tomato, tomato. I feel like I'm not like I'm doing this over my over my laptop all the time. That's reckless. Come on, man. We only have a couple more minutes left. What What's my grade <laughs> and what's my comment, Larson? Um, I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm burnt out right now. It's been a long day. Oh no! Come on, give me one I'm more. Looking on, I'm looking on my screen. Your camera's flickering here. I can only imagine what it's doing on your end. You've been you've been okay. You've been okay, which will totally jinx right. it now. Right. Let's get one more good question in from the Twitch chat, and then we'll call it a day for the podcast. And if we can, we'll hang out in Twitch chat for a little bit longer. All right, sounds good. Is there a whole question? Uh, if there's a whole question, we'll do it in Twitch chat. Okay. I haven't seen one yet. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, Nats with the sub. Thank you so much. Oh, I put nice. So the whole question is there. I must have missed it. All right, find one more on Patreon if you get another one. All right. Uh, you're sort of oh, okay. That uh, uh, not anymore because there's just a lot of like thoughts about stuff and not questions uh. on on patreon oh here we go okay we already kind of know this one but johnny ralston says what kind of step do you think what kind of stipulation do you think randy and the fiend should have and do you think it should be cinematic he says mm-hmm. he thinks it should be a false kind of anywhere let me ask you something let's take cinematic out of it how do you make this an interesting live match sb all live yeah with the pre-film You know what they do? You know what they do? What if, what if, I was gonna, I was gonna suggest something where they go the extreme opposite route and they just drop all the theatrics. Like the fiend comes out and he's all burnt up and stuff. You have all these crazy lights and Alexa's there. And he says, Randy, you know, we can we can play games with each other and you know, uh in in two and you know, in infinity and beyond. You know, we can do this endlessly. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, this comes down to one thing, I'm better than you. And I proved it because you killed a man and that makes you less of a person than me. Uh, or at least you tried to kill a man. And he sort of strips off the mask and he strips off not i mean he's not naked i would think that's great yeah but i was gonna say that sounds like something you'd pitch yeah he's back to being like normal bray wyatt yeah and they just have like a five-star fucking wrestling match you know something on par with edge versus orton and it's just mm-hmm. like, and, and in the end you know bray wyatt ends up winning pinning him clean in the middle of the ring uh-huh i, I mean i don't know how you make it compelling besides just having a really good wrestling match you know what i mean you got to project stuff on the on the mat. That's literally the not thing you do. <laughs> that's what you don't do. Because they did that. Uh. It was terrible. It yeah, was I suppose that's true. Terrible. All right. Anyways, we're limping our way to the finish. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate it. Tomorrow, 
we'll probably be uh, doing Impact uh, at five yeah. five Pacific, eight Eastern. Uh, Larson may or may not be able to hear what we're saying. Uh, thanks, yeah, everybody. Be seen. Thanks, because we're not doing Discord again. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate it. Uh, Twitch chat, stick around. Till next time, we'll talk to you later. Bye. Help support Going In Raw today by becoming a Friendo Club TV member. You'll get access to new bonus episodes every week, including Friendo Club Arcade, Live Power Rank, Vintage 10 for the Wins, and Ask Steven Larson. Get access to Friendo Club TV today by becoming a $5 and up patron at patreon.com forward slash Steven Larson, by throwing us a sub at twitch.tv forward slash Steven Larson, or by clicking join at youtube.com forward slash Steven Larson. <laughs>